Good morning. Let us begin our two decades of the rosary. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially the those most in need of thy mercy. The second decade, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most advocate, eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. The Litany, Litany of St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, noble offspring of David, light of patriarchs, Spouse of the Mother of God, Chaste Guardian of the Virgin, Foster Father of the Son of God, Zealous Defender of Christ, Head of the Holy Family, Joseph Most Just, pray for us, Joseph Most Chaste, Joseph Most Prudent, Joseph Most Courageous, Joseph most obedient, Joseph most faithful, mirror of patience, pray for us, lover of poverty, model of workmen, glory of domestic life, guardian of virgins, pillar of families, comfort of the afflicted, hope of the sick, Patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the Holy Church, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, he has made him Lord of his household. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Good morning. Welcome to everyone. Welcome to those people joining us on the live stream as well. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. I invite everyone to stand as we begin. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My brothers and sisters, we continue to more deeply into the season of Lent, drawing closer to the great gift and solemnity of Easter, celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant. And I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have the need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life and loses it, whoever hates his life in this world, will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, The voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. These last 33 days or so, or the last month or so, many of you I know have been doing the consecration to St. Joseph, uh, the various reflections on this beautiful man, this virtuous man, who was a wonderful husband to the Blessed Virgin Mary and foster father to our Lord Jesus Christ. We will do the consecration prayer uh, after the prayers of the faithful. But just a short reflection for you on the gospel before we look at uh, St. Joseph. And uh, I found it interesting in this week's reading, especially in the gospel, that the Greeks who really want to meet Jesus, 
they don't go directly to Jesus, but instead go to Philip first, and then Philip goes to Andrew, and then the both of them as friends go to Jesus and say, we have these people over here who want to see you. In some sense, uh, Andrew and Philip, what a beautiful role that is to be an instrument or to be approachable, that people can approach them and feel comfortable approaching both Philip and Andrew. And they see in these two disciples, men who have been with Jesus, who uh, radiate the glory and warmth of our Lord Jesus as well as the truth of our Lord Jesus, and they feel comfortable going to both Philip and Andrew. We have here really in some sense, you can see the rudimentary teaching or the foundation for our belief as Catholics in the communion of saints in heaven. The saints are the friends of Jesus, those who've loved him well, those who've made him present in their own time and culture with their personality. And in heaven, they are fully alive and they see Jesus and they love him. And they are approachable. We can approach the friends of Jesus and we can say, like uh, the Greeks, we wanna see Jesus and we wanna serve him and we wanna love him. And what the saints do in some sense is they take your love they take your prayers and they add their own love and their own prayers with yours and they purify and strengthen your prayers as they bring them like a bouquet of flowers to jesus i was telling the folks uh, yesterday's mass i remember 20 years ago uh, mcdonald's used to have that kind of, that sort of uh, gimmick thing where you would order something and they would look at you and they would say, would you like to supersize that particular thing? You want a bigger drink? Do you want a little more grease on top of the grease that you've already ordered, the fries and the hamburger? Do you want a bigger hamburger than you have? And you told them yes or no. I want you to supersize it. In other words, I want you to uh, pay more in some sense. That's what the saints do. They supersize your prayers and they enlarge, in some sense, your prayers that you've given to them. Another uh, analogy for you is uh, one of my uh, gifts that I got passed over when the Lord was kind of giving gifts to various people. He kind of shelves out gifts. He just said, we're not gonna give this one to Father Andre. We're gonna hold back there and we'll give it to somebody else. And that gift that not given to me is wrapping presents. I'm a horrible present wrapper. I mean, if I give you something that's going to be crumpled on the side. The tape's going to be hanging off. It's just going to be like, really? Like, okay, well, I hope the present is better than the wrapping of the gifts. So I usually ask somebody, a parishioner, my mom, uh, to wrap the gift for me so it looks halfway decent when I present the gift to somebody. This is what the saints do. They take your prayers and they wrap them with their love and they make it beautiful for Christ and they bring it to Jesus. One of the greatest saints in our tradition and the greatest saint aside from the Blessed Virgin Mary is our beloved Saint Joseph. For 2,000 years, uh, Saint Joseph has been perfectly comfortable remaining in the background. He's quietly been praying and enjoying his father, foster son Jesus in heaven. And even in sacred scripture, he's a very quiet man, isn't he? We do not have one recorded word from Saint Joseph in sacred scripture. And yet his actions speak way louder than his words do. Every time he's told to do something, he gets up and does it without complaint and dragging his feet. And these last couple of years, the Holy Spirit has moved the church, and in particular Pope Francis, to focus more on Saint Joseph because we need him now more than ever in our families, in our spiritual lives, and in the universal church and in our parishes as well. This year, the Holy Father has dedicated 
the entire, entire year to St. Joseph and getting to know him as a wonderful man, a good husband, and a phenomenal father as well. I told the folks in the sacristy before I came out, I said, I've learned more about St. Joseph this last month than I have my entire life and in my five years of seminary formation. Sure, he was mentioned here and there, but there was no particular focus on St. Joseph, and there's something kind of sad about that. And this book by Father Calloway uh, that highlights the beautiful virtues and different aspects of St. Joseph called Consecration to St. Joseph, I have truly come to appreciate this man and what a great saint he is. The litany of St. Joseph that the deacon and myself pray with you uh, in Lent, we've been praying the last few weeks, I think does an excellent job of highlighting all of the virtues of this particular man. He is just or righteous. In other words, he acts uprightly towards God at all times, his family and all those around them. He is chaste. And I think today with the struggle with chastity, especially with men, he is, can be a wonderful advocate and role model for young men and for husbands and fathers to be chaste men and to grow in chastity. Mary can entrust her heart to Joseph fully. Why? Because she knows that Joseph will always love her with a pure and chaste love. And when you're around people that you know are chaste, it's safe to entrust your heart to them because you know they'll love you with purity and with integrity. And Mary can do this with St. Joseph. St. Joseph is prudent. You know, in our own lives, oftentimes we get into these little pickles and sometimes it's not even our fault. We just think, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know what to do here in this particular situation. Joseph understands this. He himself was in a bit of a pickle with Mary's pregnancy. And yet he hung in there because he's so rooted in God's word. He persisted. He was courageous and protected Mary and Jesus when they needed him most. St. Joseph is courageous. He took his family to Egypt to protect them, a place that's very foreign, a very foreign culture, in a very foreign country. This is nothing short of heroic. The tradition is that they stayed for seven years in Egypt as Jesus was a little boy, and Joseph found work and provided for them and protected them in Egypt. He's obedient and faithful. Whenever God says, please do this, he does it without complaint. Today, we need St. Joseph more than ever. With all the changes this past year, and including our uh, pandemic, I've had many people say, boy, oh boy, my patience is wearing very thin with all of this. With my family, they're driving me crazy. We can go to St. Joseph and say, St. Joseph, you're a man of tremendous patience. Please ask Jesus that I might grow in patience with my family with my coworkers, with parishioners, and sometimes with the priest as well. Joseph is a model of workmen. For all of you who work so hard for a living, you know what it's like to go home and be tired after a long day's work. And after a long week of work, you're tired. And sometimes you wanna veg out, right? You can go to St. Joseph and say, St. Joseph, I'm tired. And you were tired, too, from your long day of work. Pray for me for strength and consolation and renewal that I can still be present to those around me, even though I'm tired. St. Joseph is the glory of domestic life, and he's the pillar of families. Joseph loves families. He's the best dad of all, a true father and a model of what it means to be a father, always present to Jesus and to his wife, Mary. As a father, he is strong, yet so affectionate and tender and approachable. 
He protects. He provides. He is a man of stability. Obviously, with so many getting sick this year, we need St. Joseph to pray for us and to pray for those who are sick. He is the hope of the sick. He is the patron of the dying. The tradition is that St. Joseph died in the arms of Jesus and Mary. He is the patron of a happy death. You can ask St. Joseph to pray for you that you will die in a state of grace and be prepared for a good, holy death, that you will die in the arms of Jesus and Mary. St. Joseph is the terror of demons. I've never heard of that title before reading this book. What an unbelievable title that is. This guy's a dragon slayer. The demons do not like St. Joseph because he's obedient and quiet and faithful, the exact opposite of their nature, disobedient, loud, and unfaithful. It is no accident that before Jesus exercises somebody in the scriptures, he always first says, be quiet, because demons are loud, and they don't allow you to think. But heaven is quiet, and there's a sense of contemplation with song and rest in heaven, whereas hell is loud, and it's awful. St. Joseph is a man of quietness, but yet great strength. Finally, St. Joseph is the patron of the Holy Church, the universal church. The church needs St. Joseph's protection as a father now more than ever. The church is the little boat of Jesus in Mark chapter 4, and it's been beaten by all sorts of waves. Sometimes it's our fault, and sometimes it's not our fault. And those waves will keep coming at the church. We need St. Joseph to pray for us, to protect us with his fatherly love now more than ever. In every age, the Holy Spirit gives the church the graces she needs when she needs them. And the Holy Spirit gives the church the saints that she needs for every time. These past few years, the Holy Spirit has given the church the great role model of Saint Joseph that we might get to know him, to love him, and ask for his prayers. Today, we will consecrate our lives, our hearts, our families, and our parish here at St. Therese to St. Joseph, a wonderful father, a man of courage, of chastity, of generosity, and a profound love. May he be a wonderful role model for you as he is for us as priests and for any person who is open, a person of goodwill. The old Latin saying is so very true, ite ad Joseph. Go to Joseph. Today, St. Joseph, we come to you, and like the Greeks, we say, we want to see Jesus. We trust that you will help us to see him, to love him, and serve him, as you did so well on earth, and like you, we hope to do for all eternity in heaven. With the whole church, we pray, St. Joseph, pray for us. Let us now stand together and profess our common faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, 
was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. <coughs> I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As the solemnity of Easter approaches, my dear friends, let our prayer to the Lord be all the more insistent that all of us and the whole multitude of the baptized, together with the entire world, may come to share more abundantly in this sacred mystery. For the universal church, placed under the patronage of St. Joseph, that he will be to her a faithful provider and protector, a giver of strength and direction, we pray to the Lord. That through the intercession of St. Joseph, every house and kingdom and nation may stand firm before the Lord in righteousness of heart. We pray to the Lord. For the prayers in our prayer basket and those in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. For catechumens preparing for baptism and our candidates who are preparing for confirmation at the Easter Vigil. May they be filled with the light during this time of study, reflection, and prayer. We pray to the Lord. For the protection of our soldiers who are in harm's way and their families at home, that through Christ's suffering they may be protected and preserved with trust and hope, we pray to the Lord that we may all be granted a happy death through the intercession of St. Joseph, that we may be taken into the abundant life of heaven in his blessed company. We pray to the Lord. For all who have died and for all who mourn them, especially Kathleen Mary Dunbars and the Atlanta shooting victims, may the angels lead them into paradise where they may taste the fullness of God's love in the kingdom. We pray to the Lord. For the people of St. Therese, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now we'll do our consecration prayer for our parish. bow your heads. O glorious patriarch and patron of the church, O virgin spouse of the virgin mother of God, O guardian and virginal father of the word incarnate, in the presence of Jesus and Mary, we choose you this day to be our father, our guardian, and our protector. O great Saint Joseph, whom God has made the head of the family, accept us, we beseech you, though utterly unworthy, to be a member of your holy house. Present us to your immaculate spouse. Ask her also to adopt us as her children. With her, pray that we may constantly think of Jesus and serve him faithfully to the end of our life. O terror of demons, increase in us virtue, protect us from the evil one, and help us not to offend God in any way. O oh, our spiritual Father, we hereby consecrate ourselves to you. In faithful imitation of Jesus and Mary, we place ourselves and all our concerns under your care and protection. To you, after Jesus and Mary, we consecrate our body and soul. With all our faculties, our spiritual growth, our home, and all our affairs and undertakings, 
Forsake us not, but adopt us as a servant and children of the Holy Family. Watch over us at all times, but especially at the hour of our death. Console and strengthen us with the presence of Jesus and Mary, so that with you we may praise and adore the most holy trinity for all eternity. We ask all these things with great confidence through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll come around now and bless you with holy water.
Brave brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the, ni- <coughs> From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And to our mother see our most domine. And to our breast heart see our unconfitting. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the order bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. <coughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Do we have a few announcements for you? I uh, note first one is the parish youth choir has been doing a lot of great work practicing uh, via Zoom for the past few weeks, led by Norma Jean McCosco, their director. They have put together a recording of the uh, youth uh, choir, and you can listen to it on the homepage of our parish website, and that's certainly worth a little bit of your time. So the parish youth choir right on the front page of our parish website. Uh, script gift cards are available on sale. I see Terry back there. She's waving her hand there. All kinds of great options for you. Looks like Cub Foods, Chipotle, Dairy Queen, uh, things maybe for a child's Easter basket. So Terry will be in the back there for any script uh, gift cards or needs that you might have. Uh, we've done very well, and I want to say thank you for the meal pack fundraiser, Feed My Starving Children. We've actually reached our $26,000 goal this week. So we did tremendous uh, generosity and donations. So a hearty thank you on behalf of Liz Lammers, her entire team. Uh, all the money that comes in now, what we'll do is we'll put that uh, for the meal pack next year because our goal is to come back together again uh, and to pack those meals physically. Uh, there is a link to donate on the parish website homepage, or you can stop by the table in the gathering space after Mass today uh, to make a cash uh, donation. Checks can certainly be dropped off or put in the collection basket uh, at any time. Uh, this is the last weekend that donations will be taken to the kiosk for flowers for a memorial of our loved one. I see uh, Pat Strandberg's back there. These donations will be used to purchase all of the plants and flowers to make our uh, parish look so beautiful for Easter and the season. Uh, forms are also available online. Uh, the CDC has, an, and the state has some regulations for gatherings. Uh, there's no limit anymore for gatherings uh, for uh, Easter liturgies. However, they still have to keep that six feet distance and all the different protocols. We've calculated we can fit about 400 people or so in the sanctuary, uh, gathering space, and community room kind of safely. Therefore, we will have a sign-up uh, genius that is now available on the parish website, also in the weekly uh, email on Thursdays for all three of the Easter Masses. You only have to sign up for the Easter Masses. You do not have to sign up for Holy Thursday or Good Friday. So the Masses for sign-up are the Easter Vigil on 8 o'clock p.m. on the Saturday. Uh, and then Sunday, there's an 8 o'clock a.m. and 10 o'clock a.m. Masses. You might want to sign up sooner than later. That link, again, is available on the website. And uh, we will not be doing physical sign-ups, so if you're a person who wants to do that, we have somebody who will help you to do that after Mass today to sign up online if that's a, a struggle for you. Uh, the chapel is uh, nearly complete. We have a few more things to do. If you want to take a peek in there, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, grateful for John Boyer's right over here. He's done a great job for us. Dan Duffy's done a great job. A lot of work went into the, making that chapel real uh, warm and prayerful for us. There's a little St. Joseph that's by the baptismal font called Sleeping St. Joseph with a kind of a little plastic uh, box that he sits in. You can drop your prayers in there. I guess uh, Pope Francis has a little Sleeping St. Joseph on his desk. So you can offer your prayers to St. Joseph. And even though he's sleeping, he will still offer them to Jesus in his sleep. He's that good. Uh, Archbishop Hebda will be here this Friday, March 26th, to lead us in the Stations of the Cross. Uh, you do not have to sign up for that. However, we will also have a simple Lenten soup supper and a small sandwich afterward in the community room. If you do want to participate in that, we do ask that you would sign up for that, though, right on our parish website. And this is a note from Catherine. It says, we encourage you to reserve up to six slots with family or friends. That, 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 that way you can have your own little table there, uh, your own little social bubble, it says here. If you sign up as a party of less than six, you will be combined with other parishioners. You can see the events section of the website to sign up for that meal with the Archbishop. So he'll come and lead us in Stations Across this Friday at 5.30 and then bless the stations that are here. Uh, thank you very much for your beautiful voices as always, for your presence at Mass, whether you're here in person or online. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. I invite you to bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And mighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Amen.
Thank you.